Hello, and welcome to the show. My name is Martin Willis. I'm your host tonight, and it's going to be kind of an unusual show. A lot of times we talk about like nuts and bolts, UFOs, things like that. We're going to be talking kind of a full range. Since I've been doing the show, I've had um, a number of people ask me, you know, what is the connection between UFOs and Bigfoot? Because they seem to happen in the same area. And uh, repeat guest Stan Gordon, who's been on the show a number of times, back in 1973, did some really good work on that, uh, stellar work. And uh, so there is has been that question. Now, um, I'd like to keep an open mind. Uh, I, I never say I know what things are. I never say, you know, for sure they're alien, for sure they're this, interdimensional, that, or whatever. I just try to, you know, hear people's opinions and things like that. And we have two uh, very interesting guests for that tonight, Ron Meyer and Alan McGargle. And they're going to be talking about, they have uh, several films, some they're working on right now uh, regarding this topic. And we're going to be talking about all that. And uh, it should be a fascinating show. Our blog this week is a 19, it's called a 1976 UFO encounter encounter in Kentucky and another great well-researched blog by Charles Lear who by the way is uh is I think his book is just about done and when he gets that completed we're going to have him on the show to talk about it help him out with it he does such great work I'm glad to have him and uh, glad to have the great work he does and uh, it's always put out or most of the time 99 percent of the time is put out as an audio blog which if you follow our podcast on podcastufo.com, you'll get that RSS feed for your uh, podcast player or you're on our YouTube channel. That's all on there. I believe I have a show coming up, not this coming Sunday, but the Sunday after and uh, on the Everything Else show. So if you want to see what's going on with that, I really don't have a mailing list for that. All you have to do is subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's YouTube only. So that's where I talk about all kinds of things on that show. And without further ado, I'm going to bring in my two guests. Well, first of all, I do want to thank you all for listening to the show or watching it on YouTube, however you watch it. And thank you for those of you who support the show. Uh, anyone can do that over at podcastufo.com. You'll see our Patreon link. And I appreciate uh, whether you can or not uh, pass the show along if you find it interesting. And uh, again, thank you very much. And here we go. How are you doing? I have Ron Meyer. Welcome to the show, Ron. Good evening. And I'm Alan. Alan. Yes. Hi, Alan. Uh, Alan, I believe I spoke with you first when it came to uh, this. I I don't remember how we connected first, but I thought it would be, it seems like you you two and you connected me with Ron. It seems like you two would be the people to talk to when it comes to the connection between uh, the UFOs and Bigfoot that we hear about. Oh, and uh, I talked to you off air about this person. I spoke to they, that person also said they see orbs. And, and hopefully that person will be calling in tonight. This is uh, someone, just a little backstory about what I'm talking about. I sat next to a lady on a airplane and uh, we were chatting. And I finally said to her, uh, felt courageous enough that you don't have to feel so worried about it these days. But anyway, I said, I do a show on UFOs you know, what do you think of that, that topic? And she said, well, I have, I don't really know. It's interesting. I really don't know much about it, but I have a friend that uh, has Sasquatch, uh, a whole troop of them that come to her cabin in Washington. So today I spoke with that person on the phone and it's fascinating. I hope she does call in in the last half hour and explain what, what she uh, knows out there. So I'm going to start, uh, we'll start with you, Alan, since I mentioned you first, I uh, want you to go ahead if you would. And, uh, uh, give us your background and what got you interested in this topic to begin with. Sure. Yeah. So um, I've been interested in this kind of stuff since I was a little kid. Me and my best friend used to, you know, fantasize. We saw Bigfoot in the backyard and then we watch all the TV shows back in the 90s, sightings and in search of and those kinds of things. So I've been interested in it for quite a while. Um, there was a point where um, I, I did some things in the Adirondack Mountains of upstate New York where my parents live uh, and it had a... Um, a potential Bigfoot encounter and it sort of sparked my interest even more. Um, when I got back to Ohio, where I'm originally from, um, we, me and my buddy connected with the Bigfoot community there, the Ohio Bigfoot conference and some, some other folks. And it, it kind of 
took off from there. I, I um, did a lot of research with some BFRO, eventually became part of the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization. Um, I ran a camp out weekend with my buddy called Bigfoot Adventure Weekends. And, and we just had a, had a lot of things going on. And then I met Ron, um, who was doing a film project on it. And we sort of connected and ended up moving out to Colorado where he is. And uh, we decided to partner up on some things and, and take a deeper look at this. And, and now we're, you know, putting some connections together that a lot of people didn't necessarily want to put together. So we're, we're kind of looking at things differently now. So oh, how about that? Very good. And Ron, how about yourself? What got you interested in this topic? Was it meeting up? Um, wait a minute. You met at a conference? So you had an interest in this before. No, actually, I was hired to do a, a series on the nature of Bigfoot. But, but earlier, when I was a kid, and I grew up in Wisconsin, when there was little light pollution, I was obsessed with looking to the heavens. Built myself a six-inch telescope, ground the mirror itself. And I uh, came within half a day of having a comet named after me. Photographed the first passing of Sputnik. And I was obsessed with UFOs when I was a teenager. And I think I had a classic type of UFO encounter standing on top of my garage where I built a platform to put my telescope. Fast forward to about seven, eight years ago, I was uh, hired to do a program, a series on, called Chasing Bigfoot about the phenomena of Bigfoot, which has done very well. But towards the end of it, you know, I never really believed that there was actually some sort of advanced ape, you might say, running around amongst us in some way that uh, has, has, has keeps itself hidden and yet kind of interacts in, in half-assed ways. Um, and then somebody, somebody I was interviewing towards the end said, well, I think, you know, that that Bigfoot is actually paraphysical, which would mean something, you could say, a non-human intelligence, which probably would be classified as what aliens and UFOs are about as a non-human intelligence. So that was the beginning of the merger. And as a result of that, I thought, well, since I am a film producer of many years, maybe I'll do, I'm interested in this, I got to explore more what the possible connection would be. And that was the film called The Bigfoot Alien Connection Revealed, which has been a runaway success. I think over 4 million views across multiple streaming platforms. And I did that in conjunction with Alan. And uh, that became the basis of our new kinds of investigations. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if we can do anything about your audio. They're definitely, we're all noticing it. It's, it's pretty bad. Uh, may, yeah, maybe if you're closer, try that. Now when, uh, we'll get you right up in the camera, but still it's the audio we're concerned about the most. Well, the uh, the mic is in the camera or the yep. webcam. Is that any better? Yeah, that is better. So we're going to have to have you that close uh, throughout the show. Uh, and so that's just that's just fine. Thank you for doing that. Oh, that'll work just fine. Because um, I really do want to take calls. So that's uh, the only other way if your mic fails on you, we have to have you call in. And there's only one, one line, but you, but you're good. You're good. So uh, let's see. So as far as uh, I watched the the uh, Bigfoot encounter, uh, the what? Well, um, say the title of that if you would, please. Alan, yeah. okay. uh, the Bigfoot alien connection revealed. That's right. Yeah. So I watched that, and I thought it was, you know, uh, for the most part, really interesting. I I thought, you know. To be honest with you, there was a couple things that I thought were reaching a little bit, you know, and um, but, you know, I know that gets a big audience. I know that, too. You know, people are, are fascinated by that. And, you know, I mean, we really have to also realize, uh, you, you know, when you're talking about this type of topic, the number one thing, people want the nuts and bolts. They want evidence. They want to, you know, where where is that? And. And and just just let me show this uh, to the uh, to the audience that are watching on video. This is a stabilized video of the only really good video, the Patterson Gimlin 1967. Here it is. It's colorized and stabilized, and you can you can see that. Um, I know there has been 
a lot of this is slow motion. There's been a lot of people that have tried to analyze this to see if that is someone in a gorilla suit. And you know what? The anatomy of a human human being does not line up with the joints and things like that. So it's uh, it's fascinating to think that 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 could be the real film. Now I've seen and you. I'm sure you have seen other films of people showing, and, and it's just I don't know if those are real. You yeah. know, there's little glimpses and things like that. But for instance, you know, my my thought is right now, okay, this woman I spoke to earlier and she had to get off the phone quickly because she had an appointment, but it was, uh, why don't we see video? Why don't we see pictures of these? That's kind of, does either one of you want to connect? I mean, uh, uh, take that topic. Why I mean, not I, really good video? I, I think that it's just, it's just not possible. There's, there, there's something sort of non-scientific about, you know, the experiences that people are having with all this that are just, they're, they're not tangible in that way. It's not meant for everyone. It's meant for the individual, whatever type of experiences it, it's been. And I can let Ron elaborate on, on sort of what I mean. Ron, well, you, yeah, go ahead. I mean, I think the same is true for, let's say, craft, alien craft types of experiences, right? They, there are not very many really good pictures of, or videos of, of, of alien craft, unless you know of some that I don't. You know the Tic Tac ones are, are quite interesting, and Bobby, I've heard that that the um, those are some of the worst pictures. So maybe there are better ones, but um, there are multiple ways to experience paranormal phenomena, including Bigfoot, that are at least associated with them. So I'm I'm not saying, I don't think we're saying that this creature is something like you could film. You could you like you'd film a, a gorilla because it's not it doesn't have that nature. It has some other nature rather than it's paraphysical, supernatural, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't have a physical existence, but it can appear in a physical way. You know, the most common evidence of Bigfoot are, are footprints, large plaster of Paris cast. But almost in every case, there's only two or three and then they disappear. So you think if you were tracking some animal, the tracks would go on and go somewhere, end up somewhere. And But in almost all cases, including our own cases in our land, they show up, they go for a while, and they just seem to disappear into nowhere. And there are plenty of accounts of, of Bigfoot disappearing in front of people's eyes or merging into orbs or some people even saying being pulled up into UFOs. So they have this quality that's that's not in some way totally of this world, only partially of this world. Yeah, you know, uh, years ago when I started this show, I remember that I had um, someone on that was actually taking reports. It wasn't MUFON. I'm not. I don't remember if it was an organization or not, but taking reports of of UFOs. It, it might have been MUFON, and the story of this particular encounter was this woman, it was an older elderly woman and she was watched this large orb, you know, come down behind her property. And then she sees like an, a big foot appear out of it. Now this is going back, you know, 10 years ago, I heard, heard this. Um, and so that makes me think, you know, I don't know what I think about it. You know, uh, are they interdimensional? Is that the, is that the leading, is there a leading theory? I should say. I mean, what, what's their nature besides not flesh and blood totally? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. I mean, are they coming? I mean, are people, is it like a, a common theory that they're coming from another dimension or is there no common theory? Um, I mean, that, that's the simplest way people talk about mystical experiences is that they're interdimensional, but I'm not quite sure what, what that would actually mean. Yeah. Um, so, so, uh, Ron, just to let you know, uh, Bill said you can back up just a little bit. I think you now right, right about right there. That's let's try that. So, yeah. Um, and this thing about orbs, you mentioned that earlier, people are mentioning that they see these things disappear into orbs and, 
if they, you know, is that their way? They, if it is interdimensional, is that the way they travel? You know? Well, um, I, I, I'm not stuck on the term interdimensional. What do you mean by that? Well, um, that they come from another dimension. They come in and out of our our space from another space. I mean, I'm just wondering if that is like a common theory of what these things are. Because there's no remains, any no one's ever found like a Bigfoot body or bones or anything like that that I'm aware of. So, so, so that they're not at least totally flesh and blood or part of our our natural system. They're somehow somehow supernatural. But you know, Christians talk about God living in heaven, right? And they don't call God interdimensional or yeah. angels or so on. So, so I'm not sure what the, I don't think anybody really knows what the source is in that sense. Yeah. But what about UFOs? I mean, they, uh, some of the occurrences seem to be quite mystical in that same way. Yes. Um, I think uh, if, if you think about the state of physics and relativity, there's a lot that's not known right now. Right. And um and I don't think either of those will give you any answer to that question in particular. I think it's it's open right now for exploration, how this can happen. But since since when, since recorded history, people have been having these kinds of appearances of something supernatural, whether they're Bigfoot or you know angels or you know Christ went into the mountains and had some sort of encounter. The Bible's full of them. So are the you know. Muhammad had a, had a supernatural encounter. And of course, Eastern religions are full of them as well. These experiences that are sort of tailored for you, and they show up in a way that, that sort of makes sense for you in the short term, and you can handle them. So mm -hmm. but, but what it's all about is, is still open right now, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, and that's how I feel about UFOs as well. You know, like we're, uh, that's why I like to interview different people that have different theories on what these are. And I've heard, I've heard it all. Um, and the best, the best answer I like to that question is maybe there are several different things, you know, maybe yeah. it's not just one thing. Yeah. Can, can we tell you about, uh, we, we got kind of carried away. I have, I have, we live near the Rocky mountains We're on the edge of the Rocky mountains. We, op we opened up, we thought we could maybe open up a portal on our land. And uh, we actually captured on film creatures coming through. Not Bigfoot, <laughs> but strange creatures. And we we got them, you know, visually. Wow. And you caught it on film? Absolutely. Well, you know, on a webcam. We don't shoot film anymore. but Yeah, yeah, right, right. And um, do you want us to, to tell you about that? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Well, yes. <laughs> so, so we also think that that not only, and of course, this goes with the UFOs as well, is not not only do you have these glimpses, but sometimes you can interact. There's a long history of of people getting downloads, like uh, Newton got a download of, about gravity tying together what happens here on Earth and what the planetary movements are, and after that, you know, he became obsessed with mysticism. So this, this is pretty common. So anyhow, we, we started out seeing if we could maybe interact with, with what we thought might be Bigfoot on our land. And one of the ways to do that is to put some sort of object someplace and see if something could move it or change it when you go away, just to see if it would happen. So we, our land is you know, very rugged, on private property close to Rocky Mountain National Park. And uh, Alan, we tell him about the feather we put in the bottle and how we hit it and all that. And then what happened? Yeah. So during some of our filming for the, the Bigfoot Alien Connection reveal, we, we talked to a lot of people, um, you know, out on the West Coast. And, and they told us about, you know, sort of gifting and, and how you can have these interactions with, with Bigfoot. Well, what they said was Bigfoot. So we, we tried to do that. We took a uh, sort of a glass bottle with a, a sort of a thin top. And we put put a feather in there, and we kind of stuck that up underneath some rocks. Uh, just sort of created a a way for an interaction to happen, and 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 we did it in such a way that um, someone would have had to 
you know, found the bottle, picked it up and shook the feather out. So it just tried to make it as, as nature proof as we could. Um, so we, we had that set up for a while and eventually we, we came back in after a couple attempts and, and the feather was out of the bottle and we found it stuck sort of in this crevice nearby. So to us, that was sort of maybe the first sign of actually starting to make some sort of connection. Something wanted to play. Um, yeah. So what, what we did next is that we said, well, let's set up a trail cam on this location. Now we'll consider this our gifting site. And uh, we did. And uh, we came back one late, late in the fall and dropped at our gifting site was a mutilated deer. You probably heard about mutilations as some sort of weird paranormal phenomenon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that blew our mind. So, in fact, you know, it's kind of spooky. <laughs> I, I actually had a mental experience at the same time when we discovered that, where I have a way of meditating and I did an open eye meditation. I closed my eyes and immediately a parade of about a, a hundred weird creatures poured through in my mind's eye, indicating something like what would show up eventually. So when we talked to some people about mutilations and this seemed to fit the bill quite well, and this is all well documented on, on film as it were or tape. And then when we came back another time to just check on the trail cam, Alan looked at, you know, took the took the, the SD card and uh, and looked at it on his computer. Why don't you tell him what we found? Yeah, so we had a, a series of, well, maybe two or three, I think two clips that were all static. It was just white static at first okay. glance, which was very unusual. I never had so never seen that before, especially I've had that camera for a while. But as we started to sort of look at that footage, you could see some movement in there. So we were able to sort of invert that image, turn the white to black and the black to white. And we could clearly make out um, these little creatures. There was two or three different videos we have of, of these little tiny little creatures. And so wow. also at the same time, you could see that there was like a dome shape to the static. Um, it, it wasn't just static in general. There was a very clear shape to it all. By the way, the camera was working perfectly when this wasn't happening. We had good night shots of foxes and daytime shots of magpies. And so we went out and took and took magnetic readings to see if we could confirm that dome shape. And for sure, sure enough, we got magnetic fluctuations corresponding to that dome shape that were off the charts at the same time. We could get that anytime we wanted. And wow. Interesting. So just getting back to the the mutilation, the deer, did you actually walk the exact same property and then it showed up after? I mean, did you not see it one day and then it was there? We, you know, we have, we have to drive about an hour and a half to get to our site from, from where we live. So we, when we came out there, it was totally unexpected. I'm sure that the state it was in, if we had come two days earlier, we went to see it. And if we had come maybe a week later, it might have been somewhat devoured. But again, I don't know what to say. It was just brand new, no blood. There were saw marks, cut marks, as well as rip marks, no head. Um, and, and, you know, we're on a, a lot, a gated community of large landholders of 40 acres who are all pretty civilized people. So it's just, and there were no drag marks and this was off the road quite a bit. So it was a mystery. This is all kind of a mystery. I know that you mentioned the Skinwalker Ranch phenomenon. That's what you call it. And I think that is a, a good term because I, you know, most people know uh, what that is. And so you are obviously out there looking for these type of areas, which there seems to be quite a few of. Some of them say there's, you know, a Native American 
connections. Some people say that there's a uh, geological connection, minerals, things like that. Um, so this particular area you're talking about in Colorado, does that have anything that stands out to you, either one of you? All of that. <laughs> there's All an Native American connection. There is, uh, you know, a crystal connection. There's a lot of rose quartz and things like that in the in the ground there. So I think, yeah, it, it, it's a, there's a connection to all of that. And, and a, lot, a lot of reports, you know, it's around Estes Park, the gateway to, to the big park. And near the Stanley Hotel, which is considered to be the most haunted hotel in, in the country. You know, the place that uh, your boy from, from Maine hung out at. And got the inspiration for The Shining. Yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, I lived in Colorado for three years in the in the Longmont area, but I used to travel all around. Uh, I loved it there. Uh, so here's a question uh, someone wants to know. Uh, please ask about the possibility of terrestrial Bigfoot as well as ET Bigfoot both. Are there both? Any comments on that? So certainly there are, there are appearances and glimpses of both without a doubt. And often in these uh, these paranormal hotspots that we've been investigating, both show up. We were one in Wisconsin where we had all sorts of strange things. We were looking for the beast of Bray Road. Uh, and we're kind of hypothesizing that these beasts are a group of animals like the beast of Bray Road, which is a dog man or a goat man and Bigfoot. They're probably all the same phenomenon in our opinion at the moment. Mm -hmm. It is showing up in different ways for different people. Yeah. And, and once, once the site becomes well known for them, more and more people become aware of it and they start having experience. In. And so we actually captured maybe the Beast of Bray Road on uh, filming it too. Mighty strange occurrence there. That was in Wisconsin. So, but also at this site, which we call our sweet spot out there. I've, it's the best example of um, UFO pencil shaped UFOs. Are you familiar with those? I'm sorry, what shape? Pencil shaped. I thought that's what you said. <laughs> but, no. Elongated one, like this. You know, they are, they're like this. Pencil shaped. Long, oh, pencil. Like a pencil, you're right. Uh, okay, see, I'm having a, still having a hard time with that audio. It sounded like you were saying pretzel. And that would that would be a new one to me, you know. I never. Yeah, they had a little salt on them and everything. So, I the, the guy who owns the property I captured on his trail cam the best pencil shaped UFOs I've ever seen, moving, moving in in actually moving in the frame from one spot to another, and changing the number available right over the spot where we may have captured the uh, Beast of Bray Road on on camera. Interesting. Wow. Uh, here's another question that, and people, thank you for putting your questions in all caps so I don't miss them. Uh, so what about them? Do you know, I don't, I'm not familiar with this, but I have heard of people suggesting that they hear something in their mind. This, uh, he's calling this the mind speak phenomenon. Many reports have been uh, about that. Um, what do you have to anything about that? Do you have any comments on that? Alan, Alan's pretty familiar with that personally. Yeah, it's it's not so much um, mind speak for me. It's it's more of a it's been more of a sort of a spiritual experience is what I liken it to, um, where I I feel emotion, but not my emotion, and I sense this presence when I'm close, along with you know hearing other noises, footsteps, and things like that. Um, yeah, there's there's um, I feel this connection when I'm doing these things. Like, not only am I looking for them they're looking for me at the same time. That's what it feels like. Um, so I think they have a way to communicate. Um, maybe some people can communicate with words, but for me, it's, I sort of, you know, I feel it. Huh, yeah. How about that? Yeah. Uh, go ahead. When we were in Wisconsin, where we were looking at the Beast of Bray Road, uh, our host, who's a, you know, well-experienced uh, that's watcher and kind of gone from a hairy hairy creature in the woods to something more paranormal at one point when i did a meditation he heard mind speak tell him he usually goes out armed with tons of equipment and cameras rolling and he looks like he's ready for battle in afghanistan or something he, he heard clearly 
something in his mind and felt it at the same time to turn everything off. And he had never done that before. And he did it and it put him at ease and made him feel comfortable in the way he had never felt in the woods before. Yeah, that ties back to what we talked about at the beginning of the show where, you know, no one ever gets a good picture. I think if you're going to have an experience of this nature, you can't go in there like that with that intention, with that equipment. It just it doesn't work that way. It's not going to happen for you like that. I've heard I've heard other people say that um, that they uh, that sometimes they don't even bring anything with them because yeah. they want to have an experience and that if they have things with them, they won't. Well, the thing for me that really started to, you know, turn up the volume on a lot of this where now I start to have experiences more often than not has been opening my mind to that. And that took a long time for me to do because I'm not, you know, that kind of person. I'm, I'm an engineer. I'm science based. I, I don't think that way. So it, it was sort of letting go of all that when you're, when you're in the woods and, and letting it, letting it happen. But that, that's a really hard thing to do because you don't, it doesn't feel natural, you know, for me anyway. What about fear? Now I think of Bigfoot and I can't help but to think that if I was in the woods and something was nine feet tall and big and hairy and walking toward me or away from me or, or anywhere that I saw, I would be petrified. Well, and that's part of what I'm talking about. You know, you have to let go of all that. You have to be receptive. If, if you panic, you're going to just shut down. Everything's going to shut down. You need to be calm and, and open to that and, and things will happen. I mean, I've had these things, um, you know, I didn't see them, but I heard them walk right up to me, you know, six, eight feet behind me. And I could I could feel it. There was like a, a, a warm, swirling feeling in my chest. I knew something was right behind me. But it just, you know, you have to be calm or or it's it's over before it even begins. Yeah. And what about, I don't know which one of you said it, but someone said people witness different things. They're seeing, is, does that mean when they're seeing this together, they're both seeing something different? I think it happens both ways. Sometimes people will see the same thing. And sometimes they'll see something different or one will see something and the other won't see anything at all. Yeah, we've had experiences where I clearly heard something and Ron's standing right next to me and he didn't. We've had instances where we've heard the, the typical Bigfoot wood knocks, clear as day, super loud, two cameras rolling, and we go back to review the footage and there's nothing. It's uh, not on there anywhere. <laughs> so wow. I think, I think yeah. there is something to that. Yeah. Well, so, it's the same thing with UFOs. Uh, yeah. I've heard a number of people say that they both, you know, side by side saw something different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, witness testimony is, is good, but it's also, it's, it's the hardest piece. It's of evidence. Yeah. 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 So, so just one more thing on, on the fear business, I think, and this, I think this is correct, that the mental state you go in with, whether it's fear based or something much more calm, or even joyous, your paranormal encounter, whichever it will be, will reflect your mental state. Yeah. And so it takes a bit of training and preparation to open people up, I've found, to, to get out of that fear state into something more opening and accepting. And then your experience will, will mirror your mental state. Yeah, I've been in the woods with people that were armed to the teeth. You know, that was the way they went. They were, they were frightened and I had experiences and I was 10 feet behind them and they didn't, you know, just things like that. Uh, isn't that something? Yeah. What, well, um, here's a very interesting question from uh, Carl Bids and uh, any connection to Bigfoot and people disappearing in the wilderness. I don't know if either one of you have ever followed uh, David Polites, um sure. 411, all these strange missing people. And you know, I think you know, people have asked him that question as well, I believe. Yeah, I mean, for me, the experience of, that I have had have not been fearful whatsoever. And uh, I, don't, I don't believe there's a direct connection, not to say that something couldn't happen. Um, maybe if, if those people are threatening them in some way, but uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not convinced that that's a normal thing, not to say it hasn't happened. Yeah, interesting. Well, when we think, 
go go ahead, Ron. You look like you're going to say something. Yeah. So one of the most important aspects of our investigation is that every time we've gone in the field, we've had some occurrence of some force messing with technology. Hmm. It gives you gives us some sort of clue as to what the nature of these things might be. Um, you want some examples? Yes, I'd like, and I'm going to ask you right off the bat, how about the draining of batteries? That's what I always hear. Yeah, that we, we had a spectacular one of those. We were in we were in Arkansas at a crystal mine, and we, you know what a REM pod is? REM pod? A REM pod. It's a... Oh, no. It's a it's ghost okay. device that puts out a, a very weak electromagnetic signal in the radio wave frequency range. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like a little dome shape. And if something gets into that, it, it disrupts the field and it sets off a visual and audio type of um, display. And we set these on a picnic bench and my, my cameraman had a, a long live audio recording device, separate, independent, set it next to us. And we went back and we were on a stage looking and all of a sudden the REM pod went off and it was going crazy and we could see it visually we could see it through to uh infrared and we could see it through just normal um, camera enlargement and it lasted for over 12 minutes and then stopped hmm. and when uh alan and the cameraman went to um, gather the the tools up they had multiple experiences why don't you say what happened after alan yeah so when we we picked up the the rem pod it, it was the batteries were dead and then we went to shut off the audio recorder that was right next to it and the batteries are dead on that too and our cameraman said that you know that should last a day or two that had a plenty of power in it so that was very surprising and then mm. as soon as we sort of got our hands on those things there was just we both got hit with this just horrid smell that came out of nowhere just hit us huh. both like a wall of just just really nasty <laughs> putrid smell and then as soon as we both sort of discussed it for a, a few seconds it was gone isn't that something well speaking of odors um the you hear a lot of people talk about the bigfoot odor that sort of musky and maybe they smell bigfoot before they know he's even there is that something you hear of when you've looked, investigated these things it is i i've, I've, I've experienced that too i i don't know if it's a you know, a, a defense mechanism or if uh, it's a stinky Bigfoot or what, but it, it doesn't happen, you know, all the time. It's not, it's not a, a telltale, you know, part of every sighting, but it's definitely a, a thing that people say a lot. Wow. So what's happening is that in this particular incident, um, the owners of the property interpreted all this as some sort of encounter with Bigfoot that, that something we couldn't see, at least in the visual spectrum, was interfering or moving inside that electromagnetic field, producing that smell. So a lot of paranormal phenomena, which probably 50 years ago were not in, would not have been called an encounter and interpreted as Bigfoot, are now being interpreted as the presence of Bigfoot. Just like Alan's felt experience in multiple places, he could say they were Bigfoot or he could say it was something else that was paranormal, maybe alien of a different nature. But more, more and more things that occur that are unusual or kind of supernatural are said to be attributed to Bigfoot for whatever reason. And, wow. Now, we, we talked earlier about Skinwalker Ranch, and I know that there was a science team there, and they actually uh, were not filming at the time, but they saw a portal and they saw this animal, not a Bigfoot, but some type of weird animal come out of this portal. And uh, this is uh, also this uh, question that just popped up here. Um, Al Jay Allen wants to know if, um, do you have any comments regarding them traveling through portals, actually? I mean, I, I think you mentioned that, smaller animals. Yeah, that's a real possibility. I mean, I think um, your comment about Skinwalker Ranch, that's, how, I guess, what we would classify that it's the same thing that we had happen on bronze property. So, you know, we, um, we were at the Montana vortex or, uh, up in 
near Glacier National Park, and they have a, a vortex there. And, and the owner of the property has video of what he says is a Bigfoot coming through a large hairy being sort of appears. So I think it's it's possible if it's if it happens all the time. I, I don't know, but I think it's definitely possible. So, so if you remember that incident at Skinwalker Ranch is that these portals occur in conjunction with a dramatic drop in temperature. I mean, people who, you know, have encountered ghosts and crazy buildings, it's almost always a felt drop in temperature as if maybe that can be attributed to a portal and something moving through. So in two of our investigations, we had clear evidence of um, portals that we captured on our thermal that were uh, in, uh, on a summer evening in, in Washington, state of Washington. We found a, a cold spot on an area where a sensitive said she had plenty of paranormal activity. And what was the temperature below freezing in this little portal area, Alan? Was that something like that? Yeah, we were getting really low temperatures. I don't remember the exact numbers, but 30 and below. In a small area. Really? Wow. And then at our place where we thought maybe we had the Beast of Bray Road, we had a similar sort of situation where the temperature was, it was a warm evening and the temperature was down into the 30s and 40s again. And it has a physical shape of kind of, kind of like a circle, but not quite as more rough. But the big, the big exp experience they had at Skinwalker Ranch, same phenomenon, a portal when all this stuff showed up. And, um, and in Colorado, we had a situation where two guys were out doing Bigfooting during the Bigfoot weekend. And we captured on film from, from each one a different look at what they said was an orb. Um, mm -hmm. and, and this wasn't, you know, backscatter because they weren't using uh, infrared still cameras shooting, you know, with flash. Um, quite different in shape and very interesting. Hmm. And, and one of them said that a uh, Bigfoot emerged from that from that of uh, the uh, of the of the, um, the portal or the orb, the orbs. They all occurred together. So we documented that too. Interesting how, you know, another thing that makes you wonder if it's what makes, like, say, if these things are really happening, happening in certain areas, um, you know, I mean, they, they theorize, you know, the minerals, they theorize, you know, what we talked about earlier, Native American connection, whatever, but th it's not just here in this country, you know, things are happening everywhere. You know, even at Rendlesham Forest, they say weird things are happening. Um, you know, that's known for a 1980, you know, UFO incident at a military base. But people are saying that they've seen cryptoid animals and things that are just really wild. You know, the dog man and all that, everything else that they see in this whole area. And why do you suppose it's uh, they're just in certain areas and, you know, for it? Does that point more to where people might think that this could be uh, travel through some other realm? So, you know, I think if you look at history going way back, I think all these mystical experiences always correspond to some sort of place. You know, Jesus had his experiences somewhere. Muhammad had his experiences somewhere. Often the, the people that were in India or the Buddhists, they're all associated with places in some way or another. Thomas Merton, the great Christian mystic, said there are places that are thinner to the other side, whatever that means. So we, we also think that human consciousness joined together, and there's some evidence, like Dean Radin. Do you know who he is? No, I'm not familiar. No. Yeah, the great psi experimenter, uh, the scientific work, that, that human consciousness joined together can create these places so that people are creating them. And once once it starts, it begins to build and build. And we have some pretty good evidence that that's the case. Because everywhere we go, we can kind of pinpoint one or two people who are kind of the beginning of it all. Wow, interesting. Well, last week's show was on the consciousness connection with UFOs. 
Last week was that. This week is Bigfoot. <laughs> so I, think I just heard very similar for sure. I think. Yeah, I it's just the same heard kind of process. Yeah. Um, okay, I just heard from the person I spoke to earlier, and uh, she's willing to call in. So uh, I might do that a little bit early, and I'll, I'll let. Uh, of course, Bill has to take the call and all that. Here's another question: Have mm -hmm. either of you heard the samurai chatter from these creatures? Yeah. Yeah. What does that um, mean? I, I, I did a lot of, you know, sort of cut my teeth on Bigfoot at Salt Fork State Park in uh, central Ohio, which is well, well known across the country with Bigfoot folks. And uh, me and my buddy were, we, we had reserved the group campground, which is a huge area off in the wildlife area of the park by itself. And we had, we'd gotten some special permission to go in there after the season. So it was in March and it was really, really cold that night in the twenties. And we had set up our tent and we were just sitting by the fire um, you know, discussing our plans and how we we're going to, you know, do our investigation and, and down on the, the trail down below us, we heard what sounded like a, a woman talking to two kids, just soft little voices. But the more we leaned in and listened, we we're like, that's not people, but it's language. And that's, that's what it sounded like. It was that sort of chatter noise. And, uh, it, it went on for a couple minutes and, and we had a, a very restless night after that. Interesting. Wow, that is that, and I had never heard of that. So, yeah, um, I'm asking. I'm asking. Her name is Mar D M A R D I. I'm asking her to call now. So, uh, Bill might be uh, ready and standing by, and we'll we'll take her call. So, why she's in Washington State? Why Washington? Why so much going on there? Don't I know you two are in Colorado, but you must wonder why that state is so active i mean is it the wilderness does that have something to do with it it does and i think there's a lot of people out there dedicated to finding it too so you've got more people looking um but yeah it has a it has a a, a real rich history I, I i'm not sure i mean it's it's super remote out there but, but also there's a lot connected to the to the, the volcanoes and the cascades Mm -hmm. There's a lot of underground passageways and strange things connected to those volcanoes. I heard that. And then there's the Mima Mounds. Have you heard of that? Uh, where's That's there, obviously. But where? Where in the state? Where, where are the Mima Mounds? Around Centalia? There, there are these, these conical-shaped things that are maybe six, seven feet high, and there's thousands of them all lined up one after another. One theory is that aliens somehow were digging these tunnels and that's where they dumped the material. Otherwise, they're totally inexplicable. There's no no way that they could have occurred. And they're quite ancient. It's just really bizarre stuff like that going on. Now, have they ever done a radar to try to see what's down inside them? Like a lot of times there'll be a burial, uh, you know, chambers or something that are unusual. Yeah, there's nothing there, but there's thousands of them. All lined up in one area. One F, they're probably five or six football fields across, and it goes for miles. Wow. And Ron touched on another, you know, topic that's come up while we've been doing this research and, and talking to people. And there's there's a contingency of people that believe that they may be subterranean as well. And there's a whole infrastructure underground somewhere that these things could come in and out of. Wow. Well, I have uh, Marty is on the line. I'm going to add her to, to the show. And Marty is uh, the person that I was talking about earlier. I met her friend on a plane and started talking uh, to her and she connected me to her today. Marty, welcome to the show. Hi. Hi. There. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Uh, are you willing? Let's hear your your what part you're right on the border of Oregon, right? Your cabin. Yes. OK. Yeah. So can you explain what, what is happening? Well, um, for the last three years, we've developed a relationship with a group of Sasquatch that live on the property. And um, I realize that sounds, well, to this audience, hopefully it sounds normal. <laughs> <laughs> to me, I'm a skeptic. I'm a natural skeptic of everything. And so... Um, but I'm very open-minded about most things. And, and, and so it's, um, it started with just hearing them, hearing, you know, them calling to each other at night, 
um, which is pretty terrifying. Um, really loud screams and, and the chatter. Uh, I think Alan or Ron just mentioned the chatter noises that they heard. You know, it sounds like a group of people talking. Yeah. Um, uh, we were hearing that at night as well. Like you, you would think that there's a group of humans on your property. We have 30 acres. It's our own mountain. And it, we are um, in what's called High Prairie, Washington. So we look right out at Mount Adams in the Cascades. We're right between Mount Hood and Mount Adams. Hmm. So um, that will give you an idea of the terrain. And, you know, I'm only 20 miles away from the Eseti Ranch, hmm. um, E-C-E-T-I, you know, with the, I don't know yeah, if you're yeah, You're in probably the most paranormal hotspot in the whole state, so not surprising. So, so yeah. Marty, before yeah. we continue here, I, I have to ask you, and I, I want you to continue because it's, it's fascinating to me, but what about photos and videos? Is, oh. um, I've heard other people say they disappear when you want to take a picture. Is that what, what, what's going on with that? Yeah. Well, um, I had one experience just this last June. I would, it was, I'd been, um, I meditate. I meditate twice a day, every day. I was meditating outside underneath a tree um, in a meadow where they often come and go. And yes, I believe that there's a portal here or we're in an energetic vortex. Um, definitely, we have a Native American connection here. We have everything, all of the above, check, check, check for like Skinwalker Ranch conditions. Um, and so I was meditating and I heard them say, I heard telepathically in my brain if you want to see us we'll be out tonight hmm. and i thought huh okay and i'm always the disorganized person i don't ever have my camera but i i had my cell phone on i was ready i'm like okay well we'll see if that was true or if it's just my mind you know and um that night you know every night at 10 o'clock they'd been running by the house and hitting the side of the house and I mean, it's loud. You can hear the footsteps. It's it's terrifying. And um, and so they ran by, hit the house. But then I heard someone coughing down below my window. I had my windows open. I was upstairs. I look across the meadow, and they were trying to get my attention. And I was like, I don't believe this. I don't believe it until I see you. And so I stood up and looked, and there they were. There was a group of about seventeen. Uh, about exactly 17 I counted <laughs> I I was so freaked out I'm like what 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 so I, we have motion sensor lights on the house and they couldn't quite reach they almost reached right on the edges of it mm -hmm. but what they were doing was amazing um I held up I picked up my phone camera I'm looking through the camera and I waved because they were looking right at me I could see red eyes looking right at me across the meadow so they're about what uh maybe 200 yards, a hundred yards away. Not that far, but far enough, you know? And, um, but I could see them clearly and they were, um, I could physically see them, but they sort of looked semi-transparent around their calves, around their ankles. The lower legs were semi-transparent. So they were walking and they were walking in a ceremony. They were following each other in a circle. And you know what it reminded me of is powwows how, you know, the Native Americans, I go to a lot of powwows, but, um, they go around in a certain circle. And I just started wondering, like, I wonder, what is this? Well, then I started hearing Native drumming. It was like, boom, 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 mm -hmm. boom, boom. And really loud, but it was not Native drumming. Uh, how do I know? I just know it wasn't. It was like a mechanical sound coming from the earth. And then, uh, so I'm watching and I'm, I'm filming in my camera, right? I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm going to put this video out. And, and the minute I had that thought, um, the, 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 the leader who seemed to be the largest had to be, you know, 15 feet tall. I don't know, really tall. Because uh, way across the field, really, really tall, taller than one of my tallest trees. Looks at me and my camera flew out of my hand, flew against the window, dropped it. I'm like, Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Guess not. And I just kept watching. I could still see, but everything, the power went out the, a second later, like, boom, hmm. all the power went out. Um, and I went, well, I guess they don't want to be filmed. 
And, um, but I, I went to look, I didn't have it, but I witnessed it. I saw that. And then ever, you know, I have many, many, many more experiences ever after, but that's the first time I physically saw them on the property, um, doing this ceremony. Uh, long story short, I watched on one of the shows, you know, I'm obsessed with all those different documentaries on history channel, et cetera. Well, there was something about Washington State uh, in the Tri-Cities, which is only 100 miles from here, they've got a research lab on portals. And um, they said a feature of a portal when it opens is that sound, that thumping sound. It thumps. And um, it does sound like native drumming. So hmm. uh, that's scientifically proven. They're doing experiments at this lab in the Tri-Cities on opening and closing portals. So I never knew that. I thought, well, okay, that's interesting. Well, I, while you're on, don't 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 hang up yet. <laughs> I want to know if uh, yeah. Alan or Ron, do you have some questions? I mean, this is uh, what I would consider a pretty good witness. Do you have any uh, questions for? Well, it, it sounds like a lot of stories we've heard. I mean, you have some details in there that are new, but a lot of the there's a lot of similarities to your story and other people that we've talked to and some of our own encounters as well. Um, they, they always seem to be um, just out of reach, you know, either visually or, or through the use of technology to really view them in a, in a clear manner. They, they know what they're doing, that's for sure. Yeah. Yes. Like I said, that Adams area is probably the most paranormal rich spot in the Oregon, Washington area. Um, it is. There's a guy who we work with. His name is Tom Powell. Do you know him? Maybe I not. Very well. Uh, Tom Powell, I think he Tom says. Powell, yeah. Powell. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. If there's some way we could put you in touch with him, he he's worked that area quite a bit. Um, we also got some some interesting stones from another sensitive that were put out incredible electromagnetic activity that lit us all up from that area. So there's a lot going on there. All right. I, I have a, a couple of questions uh, for you, Marty. Sure. Is, uh, how yeah. close have you ever gotten to the, and, and you said that they form different <laughs> groups, right? But how close have you ever gotten to one? How, how far away was the closest one? Okay. <laughs> this, this is, this is one of, one of the first experiences I had here. I was, standing out at 4 a.m. in our in that same field um and i hear all around me just like what the guys were saying you know i'm not seeing anything but i'm feeling them you know the thumping footsteps are coming it's like elephants thundering all around me yeah i had three dogs on a leash i had three dogs huh. on a leash out to pee at 4 a.m and they wrap around my legs and it was probably they surrounded me in a group and they were what they were. I could feel them. I could. Uh, I I was paralyzed. I couldn't move. And that is also a, a feature I've learned. Um, it's. Uh, I I was literally paralyzed, but I was being spun around while my feet were on the ground. I kid you not. So they were surrounding me, and how I knew they were surrounding me was I could feel their breath, like. <sighs> I could hear that. <sighs> and and they were going. They were saying. Hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo. They were doing fake owl calls to each other. And it was, I was in the middle of their circle. They were circling me. They were messing with me. And I was terrified. Yeah. And I went, I, I finally found my voice and I said, Hey, if you're trying to scare me, it's working. I'm really scared. And it instantly stopped. Instantly. Like the minute I said something, they went, Oh, yeah. and they just took off down the hill calling to each other. Let me uh, let me ask you something. When you say you felt them, what can you describe that? What did that feel like? Um, hot. Uh, you know, uh, my chest, I could, my my whole chest was. Um, I, I my heart was pounding. You know, like you're um, really out of breath. Yeah. And um, it was just frozen, I thought, with fear. And okay. I've learned since that's a, a sonar thing, um, like an infrasound. It's called infrasound. Yep. Yep. And, and tiger, tigers have it. Elephants have it. Um, so it's not, it's not very heavy then. Yes, very heavy, yeah. and I yeah. couldn't move. 
yeah, and yeah. my dogs couldn't move. I had one dog that ran away early on, but the other two were frozen and wrapped around my legs. And so the, we were all just standing there like, what is happening? Now, did you actually go, go ahead, Ron, go ahead, Ron. Have you had any, did you have any experiences as a younger person before this that are paranormal in nature? Me? Yeah, yeah. you. Paranormal experiences? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. You're I'm well. open to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm wide open. <laughs> um, and, and, and so. Well, that's why it's you then. Talking. That's why it's you. <laughs> well, yeah. And it's still scary. Yeah. What, what, I called the sheriff three times this last summer because of them jumping on my roof. They jumped on my roof and then I asked, I, I, I thought, well, shoot, I wonder if because they could talk to me when I meditated, I asked telepathically, hey, why are you doing this? Are you just messing with me? Because I was really scared. And, and they said, oh, it's just our way. It's just our way, like, yeah. They like me okay. I start. I feed them now. We have a relationship. I'm not even kidding. I, I leave food for them. I ask them what they wanted. I have a hidden place that I leave it. Um, I they've been interacting with me now. The closest I've gotten is maybe ten or fifteen feet away now, but they will show themselves. But they when they do, they disappear. They show themselves physically full on, and then they go into thin air. Uh, it's it's very trippy. And what about orbs? Oh yeah, uh, there are trees around here um, at night. Um, usually, it's like once a month, and that's what led me to start believing. Are they just coming here? They they have a new crew that comes in for training. I mean, <laughs> uh, I have other people. Uh, I I know it sounds silly, but I have other uh, witnesses in the family. It's not just me. There's at least four of us that have witnessed all of these things oh, at various I was ask points. You that. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not just wacky Marty. <laughs> yeah. That's a place we should go, Alan, to investigate. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It sounds well, up our alley for sure. <laughs> when the sheriffs were here, when the sheriff deputies were, I had them out three times last year because I could swear it was people. And there should be no people on my property. Like I said, we're very, very remote. We're out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, 30 acres, our own mountain. You have to come up a mile driveway to get up here. So you hear people talking, you hear chattering. It sounded like a bunch of Chinese people. That's what I thought. I thought, is this Chinese? Is it Japanese? And and then I I look, I would go look out the window. Of course, there's nothing there, but my lights were going off all night long. And, and um, the, the sheriff, when they came, I said, you're going to think I'm really nuts, but you know, this is what I believe is happening. And they're like, no, that's not nuts. All of us have had our experiences here. Sure. Ah. So it's just, it's normal. It's just people don't talk about it. Yeah. Now, why would, why would, it, it sounds like a semi-remote area. Maybe I'm wrong. But a lot of times yeah. people will spot, you know, Bigfoot in an area where it's very remote. And what would be, if, if like, I'm just trying to figure out, if these things are visiting, do they not want human re, uh, interaction or do they? I mean, do they want to? I mean, why are they here? No. <laughs> okay. Um, well, if you want to get into all that, I, I've started, I've been, because I'm a meditator, because I'm a spiritual person, because I'm wide open to all of this, I started talking with, tr attempting to talk with them telepathically. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's super successful. Like I've had two experiences where they responded back, but it's never been in the moment. It's been, I will pose a question in my meditation. I'll say, I asked just that question. So what's the deal? You know, you want to play around here. You want to run by the house. You want to make noise. You want to, you know, mess with me, but you don't really want to hang out or talk or get to know me or <laughs> I just, what, what's the deal? What is that? And they said, and why can't I take your picture? And they said, because uh, it's not what we're here about. We've lived here for billions of years. We, this is our planet as well as yours. And, 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 and they come and go how they, how they need to for their mission, quote unquote. 
I don't know what is their mission. I don't know. But the orbs, those blue orbs, um, big blue orbs, uh, you'll see them once a month here. And it, it, uh, it will coincide often with a full moon. So, um, you know, I could see why people get all freaked out and spooky about it. I mean, I still do. It's terrifying. <laughs> But it's still cool. It's cool. It's really interesting to me, uh, but it, it is scary. Have you ever, you said that you you were horrified, uh, in, but do you, are you more or less at peace now with, uh, yes. with these? And what type of foods do they like, by the way? <laughs> I've just been leaving them. I asked, I asked, um, because I contacted that there's a guy who's written some books about this, Kiwani Lepsoritis. And um, I contacted him and said, okay, here's what's happening to me. It's very similar to what I've read in some of your books. And um, he said, oh, give them organic almonds in a jar. <laughs> I'm like, okay, what? No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know where to find that. So I, I, I was like, I don't think they would like that. And, and I, so I thought, oh, well, I'll just ask. And so in my meditation, I just said, hey, I'm going to leave you. I was thinking apples, oranges, maybe some peaches. Would you like those? Yes. Yes to all of those. And it took them a while. I, they, I knew they heard me. I can't tell you how I knew. I just knew. And then later that night, I was literally up at 3 a.m. I was going to the bathroom. And all of a sudden, in my head, I hear, hello, honored friend. Yes on the apples and peaches. I'm like, uh, I mean, I about jumped out of my skin. I was taking a pee. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> okay. Okay. Apples and peaches duly noted. So I, that's what I leave them. I, I, I would leave them like every Friday I go to the store and I would bring it back a big bag for them and hide it in the hiding place. And that was really cool because to me, I'm still testing I'm like, because I don't see them often, but you can feel them, hear them. They walk with me up and down my mountain. Uh, I had to clear my road of rocks because it's, you know, the rocks get eroded over time. It's just a dirt road. And so rocks start coming through. So I'm picking out the big ones so people don't pop a tire. Well, they would walk with me like maybe 15 feet away, but I could feel them, hear them, smell. Yes, smell. And, and they would they would throw rocks back. They thought it was a game. I was throwing rocks over to the side, like, get this out of here. I don't want that one there. And another rock would come back. I'm like, from the thin air, in my point of view, I'm like, but I can hear them crackling along the sticks with me. So, so, so yeah. uh, Marty, I'm putting up this post because a, a, a lot of people uh, feel this way. Uh, this is maybe a little harsh to hear, but you know, I'm sorry. She's a waste of time. All this frequency and not a yeah. <laughs> and not a bit of evidence. Um, so, what do you? Th I mean, it is frustrating because everyone wants evidence. It's frustrating yeah. for everyone. Yep. And yep. when you're saying you you decided you you have just given up on trying to film or take a picture, you've just totally given up on that. Me personally, yes, yes, because I'm committed to it. I'm a person in my word, and I told them, okay, if I promise not to take your picture, well, I'm going to put cameras up here because this is a game trail. I don't like not knowing what animals are surrounding my cabin, but um, not intending to tell, take their picture, no. I promised them. They said no, no pictures. So, all right. Um, it's okay to me if people want to think I'm wacky. I, I don't care. I don't, whatever. <laughs> it's interesting to me. It's, it's interesting to me because I didn't believe in most of this. I thought, oh yeah, okay, sure. Sure. That happened. But now when I, you know, when I called the sheriff out here, three different deputies said to me, don't worry about it. It happens all the time out here. We understand we've all had our experiences. So that's good enough for me. And, and um, I am going to have a crew come out here um, and see if they can get evidence, but I bet they won't. Yeah, I <laughs> I bet they won't because, because um, I have neighbor, I have a neighbor about a mile up who comes once a year and he came and I told him, Hey, just FYI, there's a whole large group, like at least 20 that come and go 
from the mountain here. And so just in case you hear him tonight, he's like, why would you tell me that? You're just trying to freak me out. I'm like, no, no, I was just trying to give you a heads up if you're camping tonight. And um, he, they didn't hear or see anything. And then the next morning after those guys were gone, they were at my door. They throw pine cones at my door. And, and like, what was that? Who, what was going on? Why are they here? I'm like, I, uh, so I am going to have a crew come out here. Long story long. I've got a, um, some friends that are paranormal investigators and I told them, I said, you guys want to come and camp and use all your equipment and take pictures and whatnot. That's fine. Cause it's not me. I see. Well, they, they may still know you have a connection to it, but anyway, these gentlemen above <laughs> the, these gentlemen yeah. here, um, will probably also be interested in talking to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I'm, I just wanted to add one thing to what you said there. I, uh, as far as getting evidence and things, you know, I, I found and, and I believe now that these experiences are, are for individuals. They're, they're not, they're not something you can yeah. gather evidence. If you go out trying to gather evidence, you're, you're going to have a hard time. And, and a lot of in, these yep. investigators, they, they need to sort of step away from, that mindset if they want to have their own experiences if you get away from trying sure. to prove it and just accept that it's real and then i'm open to having an interaction that it starts to happen if you if you let it but going out there with with yeah. the intent of i'm going to share this with the world it's that's not what it's for it's for you it's not for the world that's true yeah i agree i agree i feel strongly about that now too i, I really do i i hear what you're saying Wow. It's sacred. It feels sacred to me. Yeah, and it, it's a special thing, and it's okay to feel that way about it and to treat it like that. You know, I've we've met people that have told us about these kinds of encounters on their property or that they've had, and we're like, "Hey, we're doing a documentary. Can we come? You know, check it out?" And they're like, "Nope, we don't have anything going on." You know, all of a sudden they they clam up and they don't want anything to do with it because it does. If if you if you're receiving that message correctly, it should be personal. Uh, Marty, I got a question for you. What about footprints? Someone just said, "Put flour everywhere, and there'll be yeah. footprints." But don't do don't they leave impressions in the ground? No, I've never seen a footprint here ever. Um, you know what I have seen? I was sitting. I, I have a window where you know I'm. I work from home. I look out to Mount Adams, beautiful view, and I saw. Um, uh, a, a gorilla head. I, I mean, I went, what? I saw a, a Bigfoot head go floating by the window. My window is 15 feet off the ground. Oh. So I was like, what? I mean, it made me laugh really hard because they had been throwing pine cones at the door and I wouldn't come out because I was busy. I was working. And so they kept moving around the house and finally they floated right by like, oh, there she is. They float by the window, and I went, okay, I'm going to have to go out there. Because this one is very, wants to engage. And I took my dog on a leash, and we went out there, and my dog wouldn't go. The dog's like, nope. <laughs> Turn, turned back around and ran in the house because they smell um, before I did. And can you, speaking of smell, what is the type, can you describe what the odor smells like? Yeah, it's very skunky. Yeah. It's, it's almost smells like like a combination of pot and a skunk. <laughs> <Bio. laughs> They're more yeah, and a little skunk bit weed. of that and yeah. pee. Yeah, yeah. But not as strong as a, uh because skunks last. We do have skunks here. Mm. And you know what that smells like. Then they it's really hard to get out and um this is like a passing smell. It just kind of comes and goes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm. I think the thing that's very interesting about this is you. You claim that you actually see them like disappear in front of you. Yes, and that's um, one day. That's sort of how I thought I started noticing. I had the weird experience with the beings surrounding me that were invisible, and I thought, "No, well, that was odd." But I don't really know what was that. I felt it was Sasquatch, but I. How would I know? I don't know. And so right after that, I had the experience of um, looking out the window at a tree. And, it, you know, you just kind of stand here and look out at the view. And I'm like, oh, my God, that tree is just swaying back and forth wildly as if someone's climbing it. And it's a giant pine tree. I mean, really tall. 
And uh, I thought, okay, how can that be happening? There's nothing. I'm not seeing anything else. Just this tree as if someone's climbing it and it's wildly bending to and fro. And all of a sudden, the tree goes, it got bent way over to one side, like someone's going to slingshot off it. And it went, and it slingshotted. And the guy, it was a Sasquatch. It looked like a young one, uh, black fur, and looked like, you know, a young, uh, young guy, younger guy. He went flying through the air. And as he flew through the air to the next tree over, he was flying to a tree like, I don't know, 20 feet away. And he disappeared midair. But you could see the other tree as he landed on it. So I saw him just for a flash in the air and then lands on the other tree and he's disappeared. But the tree is going, woo, 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 you know, like someone just landed on me. You do that realize was, this This sounds way out there. <laughs> but but I mean, I, I believe that it's you. That's all I you can are, say. Yeah, you, I, I believe that you believe you saw that. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, totally understandable. I, if I was listening to someone do this too, I'd be like, okay, all right. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, to me, it, we're all on our own journey. And, and so exactly. I, I'm thrilled about this because to me, it, this is probably one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me in my whole life. Like, are you kidding me? I mean, I just never thought I would physically with my own eyes and have a relationship and communicate are you kidding me? I mean, this is mind blowing to me. And I, I, I do, I get choked up when I talk about it. It's just, it's very special. It's very cool. And um, I don't care. I don't care what anyone else thinks because I just know what I know. And, and it's my whole family too. If it was only me and no other family members, oh, then I'd start doubting my sanity. So there's a question up there for you. Have you or other guests or family members ever considered it? something else besides Bigfoot or Sasquatch? I mean, is, um, that, is have, that the only thing you think it, I mean, it doesn't appear to be anything else, but what people are claiming they're seeing, right? Okay. Well, the, I just saw someone, I saw DMT up there. <laughs> no, never done DMT. Uh, never done ayahuasca. Never done it. But you, oh. <laughs> one might experience um, on the, on your boards. I just, I wasn't looking at your board until now. Um, yeah. Well, don't get no. distracted. Yeah. <laughs> Tons yeah. of paranormal experiences here to be had, just like what the guys were talking about. Um, portal. I'm sure that's why I've had a time slip experience where I went to the grocery store, came home. I didn't have a driveway to go up and I was just panicked going, what in the hell? It doesn't exist. And where I was dry, I drove down the freeway 10 minutes past my driveway where it should have been. There's nothing here. There was no, um, not a house, nothing. And, and this is, you know, like every mile or so there's a house here. And so finally I'm like, well, I, I know where this one neighbor is. He's about, you know, uh, a couple miles down the road from me. He was there. And so I used his driveway as a turnaround. I came back. I'm like, man, if my driveway is not here on this, this go around, I don't know. Where am I? Am I just in no, no man's land? And there it was. It was there. Uh, I asked. I asked about that um, in meditation. And oh, <laughs> I was told there was a meeting. We were having a meeting. So they closed off. You know, you don't have a driveway. You don't have a property. No one's allowed up here. It's like the place disappeared. I thought, okay, what, like a committee? And, and listen, people have seen, physically seen, little shadow people here, like a foot high. They're, um, we call them Menahunis. And they're these small black shadow people. And you can, I've physically seen those myself here. Uh, I don't know, what are they? Uh, they they're elementals, I believe. So. Is, is this I, something you see I, like out of the, out of the corner of your eye or you can look right at it? No, no. Looked right at it. It ran right by me. I, I, I went, oh, I chased it. I, it ran upstairs and I chased it and it flew out the window. Um, have seen one uh, running out of my car engine. And I thought, okay, is that a squirrel? No, no. It was a person with legs and arms. 
Um, that I have a picture of, a little thing with red eyes. Uh, my friend is an orb photographer. She comes here because she loves it. And um, we get all kinds of crazy orb uh, photos here. And um, we have a picture of a, one of those little black shadow people. I mean, you know. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to be in any big hurry to move out by you. <laughs> There's too much going on. No, my mom won't come. Um, mom won't come here anymore. Uh, she's too scared of it. Yeah, yeah, I would be. Uh, yeah, I'm, I may want to see some of those pictures. Well, you know, uh, Marty, I want to tell you it's been a real, real pleasure having you. Uh, for boy, you've been on for I think maybe half an hour or something. And uh, <laughs> it's it's been great. It's been really, really interesting to hear. Uh, you know, okay. directly from someone who's um, experiencing some really weird stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Thank so, you for having me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm kind of glad our paths crossed in a strange type of way. Kismet. But uh, yes, thank you very much. Okay. Thanks a lot. All Bye. right. Bye now. So I'm going to be opening up the lines to um, other callers here. And that number is going to be up on the board right here. It's 855-472-5483. The lines are open and Bill is standing by. Uh, so that that was, uh, pr you probably weren't expecting that tonight to have someone call in like that. You never know. <laughs> you never yeah. know. When we start talking about this, all kinds of things happen. So <laughs> yeah. no, that was uh, that was great. Really interesting for sure. Yeah. Have you and ever that, heard most of what she's talking about? I mean, yeah, the thing about we, flinging flinging the young one in the tree. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of times, people have pretty long winded stories. Hard, hard to tell whether you know the source of them, but yeah, we've heard them, people go on and on before with their stories of encounter with particularly a Bigfoot. Yeah, not, not totally uncommon. Yeah. And what about, um, you know, you hear other places in the world, they have different names, Yeti. Um, I, I forget all the different names, all, but they're in almost every continent, right? Yeah, they become sort of local legends in those areas. And, and you know, the, the elder folks in those places have names for these things. It's it's part of culture now, these kinds of creatures. It's a, sort of... It's an archetype, you know, the wild, wise man, right? Or wise woman is a is a pretty pretty well known archetype in the yeah. human sense for sure. So it's not surprising that if something is gonna show up to you, it'll show up as something that you might be able to interpret as the wise wild man. Now you mentioned at the 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 ranch or wherever the land is that you go to these little animals is there is there other paranormal stuff happening there as well i i don't know that we've gotten to the bottom of all of that i don't know that we've really honed in on the paranormal side most of it has been dealing with um trying to make contact and, and dealing with sort of the gifting and the, and the mutilation side of it so um i don't well, know we have anything the Estes Park area is well known for UFO True. encounters and tons of Bigfoot reports. It's not on our land, but in the, the general area. I mean, it's. Did you say, yeah. excuse me, did you say Estes Park? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know, right? I've been there many, many times. I used to live so, up there. So but I Stanley, used to love that area. Yeah. So, so we're only maybe three or four miles from Stanley Hotel, the land we're on in Estes Park. So, you I know, that, yeah, I know the hotel now and everything. I know exactly where you mean. Yeah. yeah practically every old building in Estes Park has got ghosts and haunted. Yeah. So it's, re it's really a, a major paranormal hotspot. And if you look into the literature, there's a lot of reports of UFOs, people seeing them in that area. So, I mean, we're, we're just 40 acres in the mountains. So, wow. And that's it's isolated and we don't have anybody else running around on it. So, yeah, and that's many reports from our land because we're probably the only ones there. Beautiful, beautiful area. I love it out there. We have Ken, and he's calling from your state in Colorado. Ken, you're live on the air. Welcome to the show. Ken, you're on. Hey, guys from Estes Park, Colorado. <laughs> and Colin, Colin. Hello, guys. Yeah, yeah, we're listening. Yeah, hi. Hey, Kenny. <laughs> hi, Kenny. 
How you doing, guys? I'm the first one to call you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, just uh, just excellent what you guys are talking about tonight. I can vouch for these two gentlemen. I love them both. Uh, the alien contact in the Rockies will be coming out, and we're going to talk about the orb experience that I've had and um, with the orb and the aliens and Bigfoots and all kinds of good stuff in this movie coming up. So be sure to watch that. And I just love these two. They talk about the Estes Park area. Um, I had been up in that area for about 15 years doing investigations out of Estes Park in the Rocky Mountains. And sure, it's a privilege to get these guys to come up and, and do some stuff up there and to bring it uh, to the audience. Um, more of the inner reactions of this film coming up, it's going to just be another great one that these guys have done so I yeah kenny's, to kenny's been a big help to us and uh he, he's sort of uh he's the local bigfoot guy there everybody knows kenny is the bigfoot guy so he's been a, a big part in helping us kind of sort of get to the bottom of some of this and uncover some more evidence when you say the word alien i've, I've heard heard that uh, what do you mean by that some form of non-human intelligence okay in general fair enough okay yeah, I, I just wondered how, what how, what that term meant to you when you were using that term. Yeah, I'm not and, narrowing it down to any particular technology or or any general, any specific sorts of, of phenomenon, but in, something that's non-human and, and it's intelligent. Because that that lady you were talking to, it certainly seems that she's interacting with something that's intelligent and interactive, probably smarter than her because. They seem to be messing with her in some way, which is, they're kind of playful. A lot of people have said that before. Yeah. Hey, Kenny, have you yourself had any UFO sightings there in the Estes Park area? Yeah. Uh, the They talk about the little towns around us, all the way from Glen Haven, which is a hop in a skip away. Um, one particular sighting is documented where we've seen one flying over the Stanley, and as it was flying over the Stanley, it was headed towards that little town called Glenhaven. And down in that area, I, my research area, I got a phone call uh, not too long after that few days. And I went down and did an investigation of a mutilated goat. And I called David Plotz for Missing 411. Uh, he came up and went and spent the day and investigated that. And David even came out saying that he thought it was an alien connection type abduction and um yes there's plenty of uh stories around the rocky mountains of um ufos being seen oh yeah um i i love it out there i'm trying to remember that pass that you drive through way up above the tundra it's so beautiful like fourteen thousand feet yes that's twelve Ridge road and goes on over to granby and uh um, that's a, uh, yeah. So you're talking about Trail Ridge Road. Yeah. Yeah. That is just, just beautiful up there. Love it. Um, so Mark, and, are you oh, familiar yeah. with, um, the stuff that was, that's been going on at our nuclear facilities, the alien contact experiences there? We just did a short film about this guy who had an encounter. I'll yeah. Hang on just a minute. Uh, Ken, Ken, thank you very much for the call. Thanks, Kenny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, bye. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Ron. So, so are you familiar with the contact experiences with our in our missile fields? Yes, uh, I've I uh, had Robert Hastings on many years ago, a number of times. Yeah, and, we, uh, yeah, fascinating stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just did it. We just did a short film called "Nukes and Aliens and Nukes," uh, the Mario Woods story, and he describes his contact experience there. Twenty ten, talking about aliens on human intelligence is messing with electronics they took offline the launch facilities at least part of them at if you warren near cheyenne which is close to rocky mountains in a way and uh people saw ufos over over the missile fields at that time over over cheyenne president obama was informed so it's, it's a real experience and the question is you know are they are they showing like hey we can control you anytime we want to. Are they saying we're not going to let you screw up the world by blowing it up? Yeah. 
That's I, I, Robert I, Hastings' idea too. Yes. He dedicated the movie to Robert, by the way. Yes. Yeah. You know, I think it's it really makes you wonder. I mean, that that is a very fascinating topic to me in general. But you know what Stan Friedman used to say is it, the uh, kids have found the matches. You know, and that's why they're you know they're trying to they've done these different mm -hmm. interferences with warheads all the way back since the 1960s, you know, when they, the first 11 went offline, Robert Salas has been on this show a number of times and talked about that. But you're saying the encounter in particular that you are talking about happened in 2010. Is that what you said? That's right. And what yeah. exactly happened? Can you, I've, I'm unfamiliar with that. Can you explain what happened with that one? For, for roughly a half hour, the, uh, the, the control system launched the ability to launch the missiles, if they had to, they went offline mysteriously. And UFO or UAPs were sighted over the missile fields and over Cheyenne by multiple people at the same time. You know, and that's a spooky thing to happen. There are earlier reports of such things um, before 2010, but this is a well-documented one. And of course, as I said, there's good indication that Obama was informed of it, who was president at the time. And uh, did do you know about the investigation after any of that? I do not. It's all hush hush. Yeah. And how, how about uh, is is so everything's classified? Is that what you're saying, basically? Pretty much. And who was the witness that spoke about it? His name again? Who, oh, Mario Woods. He he had another encounter in another missile field. He his mentor is, is Robert Hastings, by the way. Oh. Uh huh. He was a policeman assigned to, you know, an Air Force policeman assigned to patrolling. They're always patrolling those missile fields all the time, 24 7. Yeah. And so he, he had a direct encounter with a, a craft that maybe abducted him, maybe not, but it picked up his vehicle and moved it about at least 20 miles away, and he had no recollection how it got there on the edge of a dam. It's a pretty incredible uh -huh. story. Ah. Uh -huh. Wow. Well, wow. sounds like someone I'd want to talk to sometime. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. If you want, I can give you his email. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so that's a film that's out there. And you, we just had Ken call and talk about that film. How many films on this topic do you have? Or, and you have something in post production as well, right? We have a new series called The Paranormal Highway. This is where we went out to five, five paranormal hotspots. And did investigations, and we had at least at least four or five really unusual paranormal occurrences, including some of Alan's contact experiences. They all happened. So it seems like uh, whatever these non-human intelligence are, they seem to be happy with us filming and recording this stuff because we get stuff all the time. Like I said, when we when that those creatures we caught on our trail cam, they're quite interesting. They're small, but when when you see them in the trail cam, they, they're never wholly there. They're kind of waffling in and out of existence as they move around, which is kind of freaky but cool. So you're talking about this is through your trail cams? Yeah, we captured a live video moving, ah. coming out of our portal. Wow, wow. And all, all in infrared. Yeah. Right. At nighttime? Yeah. It's always yeah. night. Is it always nighttime? It was always uh, nice right around the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And how far are these how far are these apart? You know, the cameras that did you have a lot of them out there? We had one camera on our on our mutilation site, in our gifting site. Oh, oh, and that's the same site where you, you found that. Any other mutilations or was it just that that one? Surprisingly, a year later <laughs> it appeared it appeared like there were it was I think it had been picked clean, right? There was hardly anything left. Yeah, we hadn't been up there in quite a while. It was actually um, late last year, and when we did go back up there, there was there was a what was left of a fresher carcass there. So there was something else, but we sort of got to we sort of missed that one almost anyway. We caught the tail end of it. Well, we put the camera up again just in case, but we haven't gone back and looked at it yet. Oh wow, wow! And so, you know, we talk a lot about evidence and you heard that woman talk about how um 
the uh, she just knows that they don't want pictures of her, of them. She doesn't want, she's not able to take pictures of them because she told them she wouldn't or whatever. And, and her camera, according to her, you know, left her hand, stuff like that. Is this something that you both have heard, you know, similar stories of? Yeah, I learned very early on in my Bigfoot investigating times that if uh, if you have a lot of Bigfoot in an area and you want to get a picture and you put your trail cams out, it's a good way to keep them away. So we always tell people if they're scaring you, put some cameras up and, and all that stuff will stop. So they do seem to know um, when things like that are happening. I don't know if it's just to change the environment or the frequencies or what, but um, yeah, they definitely don't want their picture taken. Mm hmm. Um, Bill says, what about ufologists and Bigfoot researchers not working together since they want to do separate cryptid from ET? What do you think of that? Well, we definitely have been seeing a shift in that. You know, we've been uh, going around and speaking at different places and showing our films and we get uh, larger and larger groups of people that are interested in this connection. So I think it's, um, it's a, it's a way of thinking that's starting to shift. And we're trying to nudge it along if we can. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I mean, you, there. I heard you. I had never heard that there was a Bigfoot conference until I heard you say, say that earlier. Well, there's a lot of Bigfoot conferences. Is there really? <laughs> oh, yeah. They're all over the country. There are a lot of UFO conferences, right? Yes. Um, and so, so we're being invited to UFO conferences, even though we're primarily Bigfooters. So they're beginning to merge. And then the Bigfoot conferences start having UFO people. So... It's, yeah. it's shifting. We're trying good. to be that. We're trying to be that olive branch to sort of bring those conversations together. Because there's a lot of people, you know, that come to us and say, "I saw Bigfoot, but then something weird happened, and I want to talk to you about that because some of the other Bigfoot guys don't want to hear that." So, yeah, it's become other, very interesting. Do you hear of other weird things that kind of go along with that as well, besides UFOs? I mean, has yeah. anyone ever said they? saw a ghost in a Bigfoot? I mean, yeah, we, I, I we shouldn't be laughing, but... Uh, did some body voices and shadow people and all those kinds of things come into play at some point. Certainly in these things we call paranormal hotspots, there are ghosts, orbs, every form of paranormal experience. It's, they're all there. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And, right. And what about um, when things... I mean, the she mentioned this she thought she was having like missing time is that is that ever mentioned at all when people are talking about this phenomenon oh yeah that, it happened to alan we we had a dramatic case of that in wisconsin i could tell you about it if you're interested <laughs> yeah 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 go ahead yeah so um jay bachokin he's that big footer in in the, in the in the in the southeastern wisconsin in the kettle moraine and I told you there's this place that's kind of the, the sweet spot next to the, the Beast of Bray Road. Road, Have you heard of that? It's mm -hmm. probably one of the best known cryptid monster sort of phenomena. Oh, yes, I have. I have heard that. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So we, we were there. And there's a guy, a gentleman farmer who owns a piece of property, 35 acres right next to Bray Road. And he's he's recorded stuff on his trail cam that's he's captured UFOs, probably pictures of the beast, which is kind of a quasi, you know, Bigfoot sort of thing, but kind of dog man, dog manish. And so we were, we were out there and we, we noticed there was this spot that he wouldn't go into the owner of the property. He says, everything weird is going out there. So that was where we wanted to do our investigation. And when night set up, we were, let's call that the North fence. We were on the South side and, um, we decided, okay, it's time to go over to, to where we wanted to do our primary investigation. So me and the cameraman took our vehicle and drove around. And Alan and Jay decided to walk across the field to the to what we thought would be the hot spot. And as they were walking across, first of all, Jay said, oh, turn your camera on. And he did a little interview on camera, in which he, he said, basically, there's fear here. His flight, fear and flight, and he was kind of babbling away and it was sort of strange, And but that was fine. And then he said, turn the camera on again. And he took a laser, you know, a laser pointer. You know what they are? You know what a laser pointer? Oh, yes, yes, of course, yes. Uh -huh. So 
on the on the film that Alan shot, you could see that we pulled our truck up, we turned our lights off, and then there was a self-illuminating light right at the spot where we were going to do our investigation. And Jay pulled out his laser and hit it, you know, pointed at it, touched it, that spot. And that's all on film. We can see him doing that. And then he wa they, they walked to the spot, and that's where we captured the maybe the image of the, the, the Beast of Bray Road. But later, when we got back, I called up Jay and said, well, wh what were you thinking when you um, put your uh, laser beam on that spot? And he had no recollection of walking across the field, doing any of that, doing the interview. He, his, his, huh. his, and he said, normally, you know, I have photographic memory and he told me exactly what happened before he walked across and when he arrived on the other side but he had no recollection of ha that happening he said yeah it was kind of strange because Lee said he saw us on his trail cam the owner of the property and he said well I, I don't quite remember that so he had no memory so he so he went someplace maybe he was abducted who in the heck knows but isn't that darn strange very very uh Bill just posted something, and I think uh, is do people actually try to hunt Bigfoot? Yeah, you know, to kill him. Yeah, there are people that believe that's the way to to sort of bring this to to the forefront is to to bring a body back. That's that's horrible. I think. Yeah, that is you horrible. Know, I mean, especially if they're they're possibly whatever they are seem very intelligent. I mean, yeah. not especially. I mean, every you know every animal really but still i just think uh, that almost sounds criminal um here's another question do you do you too think that the government might be covering up some evidence of bigfoot just like they do similar to et's or ufos i think it's possible i think there's a, a, enough um you know known stories out there to suggest that that may be happening in some to some degree you know we don't really know what happened out in the skinwalker ranch either when when the government was sort of toying around there so there's there's a lot of secrets they have on those things i think now did they actually say i i read the book that george knapp and i can't remember who else wrote on skinwalker but did they actually say they saw a creature like bigfoot i know they saw cryptids of different types large dogs a wolf and you know things like that but they did they actually see a bigfoot like creature do you know? Yeah, I don't know for sure. And, I, you know, I don't know how some of it was interpreted either. So, yeah. Huh. So can, can I tell oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. you an image of the creature, one of the creatures that came through our portal? Uh, uh, this is the way to do that. Are you, do you know how to screen share down below at the bottom of the I thing? You see. It would just be on my, I'd hold up my uh, cell phone and stick it in front of the camera. Okay, sure. Well, we'll give it a try. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you're going to have to do a little better than that, I think. Okay. Uh, you know, if you could, we still have, you know, 15 minutes. If you have a way to email that picture to me, I will put that up for everyone to see. So, so you see that there's you, something there with a head and a tail? Yeah, you can see it, but I can't really make it out. So if you don't mind, if you can figure out a way to email that to me, um, or if you have that same image, Alan, and you're able to do that quickly, you feel free to eat send an email and i'll pull, put that up for everyone and yeah i do uh, i do have it somewhere but not handy <laughs> yeah okay uh well i'll tell you what why don't you do this yeah you try if you can't do it then um try to get it to me and i'll put it in the in the show notes for everyone and oh you mean later or now yeah if you can just send me an email right now if you can't then um then i will do uh i will put it in the show notes for everyone to see I will try. What's her, what it, I showed earlier, the Patterson uh, Gimel, I think it's mm -hmm. called. Yeah. And what are your, you know, I mentioned to you what I thought about it um, because of, you know, what I've heard about. I, I saw a guy process. Here it is playing again. It's stabilized and colorized. Um, but I saw, you know, someone take it frame by frame and the and then show side by side the human anatomy and how it just didn't work 
Okay, yeah. I think I got that email. So I will uh, I will get that up on the screen. I see it. It's not it's not totally clear, but I see I see something. But I'll get that up on the screen. Thank you. Uh, but so, what do you think about that film in particular? Either one of you want to talk. So about I've that. not sat down and analyzed the film, but that was one of the pieces of evidence that you know interested me in this subject to begin with. And since then, I've heard a lot of people talk about it, and I've I've met Bob Gimlin before, and and he's one of the most you know stand up guys I've met. So I have no reasons to doubt it, and and I sort of I sort of hold that video in in high regard. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's one that uh, has kind of stood up to scrutiny as far as I know. No one's ever been able to debunk it. Yeah, yeah. So far. This is the image that they're talking about now. I can't really I'm trying to make up exactly what I'm seeing, but I see something and what what do you think you're seeing there in this image? So there's a head um, on the left-hand side and then there's a neck and then like I said, the, the creature, this is a, a screen grab from one particular frame of the trail cam, right? But you're actually seeing, are you actually seeing this thing move in the... Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it moves off to the left side of the, the and off the, out of frame. Yeah. And is it, is it, does it have a, a gait like a, a typical animal? It's hard to say because yeah, it's, it is. it's never quite all there. You can see that it's missing like the like it's not all there. Like it's like you might say it's in half in half in one world, half in another, and that's the way they were in general, just kind of swimming through the frame that way, kind of waffling in and out of existence by moving in the frame itself as well. But it looks like a pig sheep kind of animal. You know? But it's small. It's about the size of a a large house cat, maybe. Okay. So for those of you who are listening to the audio podcast, so that will be in the show notes. You just click that in the uh, below the text on any app you're listening to the show. That'll be there. I'll put that in there tonight. Um, so, um, but you, are you actually releasing this in a film in one of your upcoming videos that are coming out? Yeah, Alien Contact in the Rockies. We actually show how we resolved it. And you can see the dome shape from which it emerged and, and the mutilated deer that showed up at the site, you know, that triggered it all, and Alan running around measuring the electromagnetic distortions and all that. It's all there. Now, the thing you were talking about, we had a bunch of questions. You called it a ram, I don't know what you call it, ram, not, it sounded like... It's a REM pod, R-E-M. REM pod. REM pod. Uh, someone wanted to know if you could describe that, exactly what it was, and the shape of it, and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a round uh, piece of paranormal equipment, um, fairly fairly small. Um, it's made out of some like round PVC pipe. Um, and then it's got, it's got some very large LEDs around the top and uh, it's a little chrome antenna that sticks up. And that antenna emits this EMF field. And when you interact with that EMF field, um, depending on how close you get to the antenna, the, the lights, the frequency of the lights um, they speed up and then they change colors and, and the, the audible tone gets higher uh, the more intense that interaction is. So we use that device in areas that are that that you just sort of set it out there in, in open space and um, it starts to take measurements and, and, and the lights start to move. Uh, and, and and how often does something happen with it? Well, not, not very often. A lot of times we, we don't have anything happening. So um, when it starts going off, we usually pay attention to it. It's, it's not it's not that sensitive a device. Ah, interesting. Well, uh, so where can someone find, like they want to, do you have a, a website or something? Where can they find you and find what you're up to? Um, well, we're, we're working on all that stuff. Uh, right now, I guess um, you a can- A YouTube channel? You, yeah, you can look me up on uh, on Facebook. I have a public profile page there. Um, I just launched the National Paranormal Network on YouTube. So you can search for National Paranormal Network. Um, I'm starting to release some films there and we have a lot of other videos. And then um, uh, a lot of our other films are also on uh, on YouTube that you can look up by name. Yeah, mo most of our films have regular distributors. You know, we don't control what happens to them in a way. Yeah. So, so like the Bigfoot Alien Connection revealed is 
It's on Tubi, it's on YouTube, it's on Amazon Prime, it's on Comcast Download, and a couple other ones like Pluto. I don't even know them all, but yeah. so so I really don't control that uh, that part of it. The, the distributor doesn't, and what the uh, Alien Contact and the Rockies will also have uh, DVDs will be made as well as the digital presence on a number of streaming platforms. But until they're released, I really don't know what they're going to do exactly. Right. Yeah, I, under I understand all that. Well, thank you both very much. It was a real pleasure. It was really something different for this show. And uh, but I really appreciate you coming on and and talking this talking to us. And I also want to thank uh, Marty for calling in from uh, Washington as well. Thank you both very much. Thanks, Martin. It was a all pleasure. Right. It was fun. All right. Take care. All right, everyone. So that is it for the show this evening. Next week, we have Ron Ferber on. And thank you all. And I appreciate you watching and hanging in for this show tonight. And we'll see you next week at the same time. And remember to keep your eyes to the sky. Mm -hmm.